Hello there and welcome to my online studio. My name is Stacy Spangler and I am a mixed media artist and online instructor and I'm excited for you to join me today as we create some collage art on paper. So today I'm going to be using a larger size. This is a 9 by 12. So I've got my watercolor paper here. And I really, other than pulling the papers, I haven't planned anything. So y'all are going to be kind of going along with me to see my process. Um, but what I did, I went through and I have a ton of like a little box that has like a ton of just like junk in it. I mean, like this, I know to some people is trash, but I can't bear to like throw these are so pretty, y'all. Look how pretty those are. So I can't bear to throw stuff like this away. Um, probably just like wipe some paint on that or something, but it's really pretty. I may or may not use it today. I don't know. But so when I went through my stash, I just pulled some little scraps that I had. Um, and you could see I was kind of, you know, I always love seeing, normally y'all know I gravitate toward pink, but I was really gravitating toward the cool colors today. So I think what I started with is that I, I pulled these painted papers that we had done, right? These are from our paper, paint and paper challenge. So I pulled these first um, and I was really kind of gravitating toward these. I mean, this is actually a really warm green, but I was gravitating toward the cooler colors. And then of course I pulled in this because this is my only pink I pulled in. And so then after I got kind of this collection of papers here and you can kind of see how they all, you know, they're actually not like color coordinated or anything, but they do all go together. They all work together. Then I started pulling other little things. And so I've got just some little fabric pieces here that were just left in a scrap pile. I think this is muslin and this is, I don't know what this is. This is like a little piece of fabric that's got some ink on it or something. This is a watercolor flower and a little leaf. Um, this is a doily. Then I had these two little, these are like a cotton duck canvas. It had a little color palette. This one's stitched. This one's just got pencil. So these were just all little scraps that I had. And so you can kind of see how as you're creating and you're, <laughs> I don't encourage hoarding because I'm a huge hoarder, but it can pay off. And so if you just keep a little stash and maybe do it by warm and cool colors or little pieces or whatever. Um, and this was just a piece of regular fabric. It doesn't totally match this, but it coordinates with it. Um, I had done a bunch of these on some tracing paper and I love the stamp. And so I pulled that. This is one of our papers that we made. I think y'all watched me make that. And then I found this paper that was laying there. I don't know where I got it or where it came from, but I thought, ooh, that goes so pretty with all this. And this was a napkin. And I need to actually separate this so I can, it'll be ready to use. But I'm just going to tear off a little piece of it. Um, so you can kind of see how I collected that and like y'all just, I, like I said, I'm really tired today. And so not feeling creative, really feeling drained, like in every way possible, um, kind of emotionally, mentally, physically, I'm just tired. It's been a great week, but it's been really tiring. And so I really did not want to come out here. But as soon as I pulled these things, I was like, okay, I'm ready to do this now. So the great thing, like I said about this is we're not, I mean, I've got some gel medium here that I may end up using and I have a glue stick. Okay. And then I just pulled a few marking tools. I'm not going to be doing any paint. So there's really no big mess. So this is a great exercise that you could pull into your kitchen table um, and just pull a stash or like if you wanted to create something on your lunch break, you could put a little bag together and this is something you could easily transport and you could do it in a journal, an art journal or anything. But, um, you know, it's fun to make these individual pieces and I always look at it as like a puzzle. Um, it's just kind of fun to put these things together. Actually, here's a piece of sheet music too. So we'll throw that in there. Okay. So here's our pile. 
And then I just got some marking tools. Um, this is a graphite, a woodless graphite pencil. This is like my, uh, this is water soluble. I don't know what this is called. I can't remember. It is on my Amazon store though, if you want to find it. Um, this is Dick Blick actually, but there's one that's, oh no, it's not Dick Blick. I'm sorry. This is, this is on my Amazon store because I looked it up because I love these pencils. Um, it's, you can wet it and it's great. So I got a white, a black, a gold, um, Liquitex, and then just my Woody Stabilo to kind of go with these colors. So I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but I, I'm limiting my supplies, limiting my, what I'm creating with. And then I did have some scissors somewhere. Scissors. I, all right. So I'm going to put all this over to the side here. Then I'll get my paper out and we'll get started. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm just going to start doing something. And so I think the great thing about this exercise is there's no rules. There's no expectation whatsoever, which is amazing, right? Um, and I think you learn a whole lot in the process because you're learning what looks good together, what your eye likes. Um, you know, I'm, you're learning like how to make things like not too busy. Um, and like, see, y'all see how this is kind of like working a puzzle. Um, and so since I, this is kind of my thought, I'm just taking you through my thought process. Okay. Since I use this, I don't think I'm going to use this because I kind of got my bright greens. I'm going to set that aside. I'm done with that. I really like this. Ooh, look at how pretty that's looking. Okay. So just like, I'm not a design person, but I did, I mean, I used to be a marketing person and I did take some design classes, but like repetition of things. Um, so I've got the repetition of circles going here. This is kind of just a little surprise element. I don't know. So I think I'm going to go with this color. Don't y'all think instead of this? I don't want to use both of these. That would be too much. But I think I like this one better. So I'm going to put this one aside. Um, and then repetition of colors also. So you have repetition of your design elements. And you have repetition of color. Um, so I've got a little pop of pink here. And that may be just enough. I don't know. Um, but, you know, we could add another little pop in here. And what I do a lot of times when I'm working with these, I take, like, if I kind of get it how I like it, I'll take a picture with my camera. Um, that way, if I mess it up and I go back and I'm like, oh, no, I like that how it was a minute ago, I can kind of like remember what I did. So I think I'm going to move this up. Let's see what other elements we want to work with here. I'm kind of liking all these here.
like that better. I like that. Maybe even without the leaf, just that. Like it doesn't have to have a leaf, right? Maybe. The round one, yeah. Definitely enough interesting pieces to do another one too. Um, I'm thinking I need some more neutrals in here. I need something down here, but I'm kind of liking that composition. What do y'all think? I think it's pretty cool looking. Thinking I move this over here and maybe just leave that offset. I need something to fill in right here. Let's see what I got over here in my stash. Oh. What about, hold on, let me grab something. Let's see. No, that's too much. I need some neutrals. I need my eye to... Oh, that piece might be okay. No, I don't like that. Kind of like that. Mm, nope. What about, let's see, let me go back to my little pieces of paper here, or my little fabrics. Um, that's too much, I think. What if I just hit it back there? Oh, what if it was just kind of like, no, I think it competes too much with this. What about just this? Just another piece of fabric. What if I did that in there? Yeah, I'm going to cut this off though. Hope this gets your creative juices flowing just watching. Um, because I love, it's kind of like I always used to say, like when I would go <clears throat> in an open house, <laughs> when we were looking for houses and stuff, and I'd be like, I love to look at open houses just for the mere fact of like seeing what I would do different. Because <laughs> y'all are probably looking at this going, no, 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 don't move that. No, I don't, no, don't do that. I would have done this. That's good. Like, you're learning what you like, what's pleasing to your eye. Um, and so that's all good. And that's why this is such a good exercise. You're learning what colors you like together. You're learning just how to free, throw, free flow think. Um, I would want to see a word on it. Yeah, Sally, that, that, would totally fit you too. Um, I would love that a word, mm -hmm. especially maybe a word stamped out would be really cool. I'll probably do some stitching on this before I adhere it all um, with hand stitching. Um, maybe turn the green piece around so the pink dots are at the top. Oh, good, great. Thank you. Great, great. Love that. Thank you. 
That did make a difference. Great suggestion. Anything else y'all see? Does it feel too busy to y'all? I think is what I might do is like take just some white thread and add some interesting stitches on these two pieces with just hand stitches before I glue it all down. Um, and I may remove this. I need something more neutral there. Mm. Very back. So yeah, maybe putting some stitching on the white pieces just so that there is like a texture there. I like that. Yeah, the stitching I think would add something. So I think I'm going to turn this around so that that's to the outside, the little, I like that. So then I would use, um, so then I'd take a picture of this just like it is with my camera so that I can remember. And then you have to start working your puzzle from the back forward, which is sometimes very challenging. And so like we probably Go ahead and use, well, I got to stitch these first, right? So I'll have to do that. And then um, use some gel medium and start putting this stuff down with just a brush. I would recommend using matte medium, not shiny, um, because I like the texture look, like just the really textile look to it. Um, and I think I'm going to tear this straight edge off here. Maybe angle that down a little bit. Too many straight angles. I like that better. It's still a little busy for me. So I take a picture of it. Um, maybe look at it again later. Maybe do another one and come back to this one. I, I think maybe like I say, I am overthinking it because I've got y'all watching me and I'm trying to like take you through my thought process. So therefore I'm overthinking it and I know y'all get that. Thank you.